Jesus. The Lord showed me something astounding in scripture this morning, and I know that I've seen it before, but it became a rhema to me, and I want to pray it through because there's something in it for you. If you can, if you can just catch this, there's something there for you. It's the grace for multiplication miracles. I saw it so clearly. I am going to begin to press into this in my life. Will you go with me? Will you do this thing with me? There's a grace in this season for multiplication miracles. Oh, of course, multiplication miracles can manifest according to God's will any time and in any season, any moment and in any hour. But I'm here to tell you today that there is a grace for multiplication miracles even now. And I, for one, am going to press into it. Will you go with me? I want to show you this in Scripture. You remember in Matthew and Luke and John and Mark, four accounts of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with two fishes and a loaf of bread, five loaves of bread, five loaves of bread and two fishes, five loaves of bread and two fishes. That's not even enough for a small family. And yet Jesus blessed it, handed it out. 5,000 people were fed. 5,000 people were fed. And this didn't even count the women and the children. There were probably 15 or 20,000 people who were fed by the two fishes and the five loaves. And guess what? There was some left over. <laughs> he had to send the apostles out to gather the fragments of what was left. Nothing wasted, nothing wasted, nothing wasted. Jesus, let the grace for multiplication come upon our lives in every area, God. Oh, Jesus, I thank you that everything we put our hand to, oh, it not only prospers, but in this season, if we can catch a revelation, if we can stand in faith, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If we can stand in that heart posture, looking with our spiritual eyes, we will put our hands to things that prosper, yes, but that multiply by magnitudes of thousands. Money miracles. Shaka tarabashi. Shoko tarabababashi. Shaka tarababashi. Exponential growth in businesses. Exponential a thousand percent year over year growth it's going to happen for those who believe for those who work diligently for those who put their hand to the right plow Jesus demonstrating that this was not just a fluke this was not just something to be once done and never again in scripture never again in the history Jesus fed the 5,000 oh, if, if he had just done it once that would be enough for me to believe but he did it again Oh, he did it again. He did it again. Mark and Matthew record again the feeding of the 4,000. They had a few small fish. A few small fish and seven loaves. Just a few. Just a few and seven, the divine number. Shaka. 4,000 were fed. And again, they only counted the men. There were women, there were children. It could have been 10,000, 12,000 people that were fed by a few small fish. They were small fish. They weren't even big fish. They were, they were small fish in seven loaves, the perfect number. I decree in your life that God has the perfect provision for you, and it's more than you can imagine. Ah, He's already planned for it. He's already readied it. He's already created what you need. It's already in your heavenly bank account, whatever it is you need. That multiplication anointing, there is grace for it in this season. Beloved, there is grace for it. Would you just believe the word of God today? Five times in scripture, five times we see multiplication miracles it wasn't just Jesus some will say well that was just Jesus well, well, well that was just Jesus you know, that was the that was the that was the New Testament ministry of Jesus and we cannot expect that again today beloved I've seen it with my own eyes but 
wasn't just Jesus. How about the feeding of the hundred men? In 2 Kings chapter 4, and there came a man and brought a man of God, Elisha, bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and full ears of corn and the husk thereof. And he said, give unto the people that they may eat. And the servant said, what? Should I set this before a hundred men? He said again, give the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, the 20 loaves of barley, just 20 loaves, just 20 loaves and some corn. And they ate and they had leftovers. 100 men, 20 loaves of barley. And they ate until they were content and they had leftovers. That's the kind of leftovers I want, praise God. The leftovers that come after I have had more than enough. I decree that Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides in this season, will provide more than enough. Oh, some of you are stepping out of the land of barely getting by the paycheck from paycheck mentality, and you're stepping into the land of more than enough. But you got to do it by faith. You've got to do it with a fullness of heart faith, the assurance that you've got the title. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now, if there were only three, I would believe it. Every word is established by two or three witnesses. If, if those were the only two or three that I found, I would say, that is enough for me. I shall put my faith upon this. Double, 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 double. Triple, 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 quadruple, 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 quadruple. Multiplication in one day. Not just on your money, on whatever needs to be multiplied. Is it your time? Is it your rest? What is it in your life that you need God to grace you for multiplication thereon? Oh, if there was only three examples, that would have been enough for me. But 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, then speaks of the widow's oil. The wife of a man from the company of prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take away my two sons as his slaves. And Elisha said to her, how can I help you? What, what, what can I do? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, well, there's nothing at all except just a little oil. Just a, just a little. She had barely enough. She was just about to run out of provision. There was just a, there was just a little oil. And Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars and don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil in all the jars as each is filled, put it to the side. So she did what he said. Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. They kept pouring and pouring and pouring. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. And the boy said, there's none left. And the oil stopped flowing. So she went and told the man of God what happened. And he said, go sell the oil and pay all your debts. And you and your sons can live on what is left. This was almost effortless. She'd have to toil and sweat and worry and fret. She just kept pouring the oil. Just kept pouring the oil in faith. In faith. In faith. And if that were the only four, but there's five, and, 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 and five is the number of grace. And then in 1 Kings 17, I read, the word of the Lord came to Elisha, go at once to Seraphath of Sidon, stay there. I've commanded a woman there to supply you with food. You know what happens next. He sees the widow. She, he says, what are you doing? He says, I, the woman says, I, I, I'm going to gather two sticks so I can make a little bread and eat it, me and my son, and then we're just going to die. She was hopeless. She was ready to die in the famine. She'd been suffering so long that she accepted her fate as death. She's going to eat these 
last bits of bread, me and my son, they, they, they were going to die. She had lost all hope. Some of you listening to my voice, you've lost all hope. You've just, you've lost all hope that anything's ever going to change, that you will ever get out of debt, that you will stop having to struggle, cut corners to the point that you feel like you're starving. It stops today. Believe the word of the Lord. Don't be afraid. That's what Elijah said to her. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do like what you've said, but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. And she went away and she did what he said and she got what the prophet said. Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. Don't be afraid. Don't fear lack. It's an open door for the enemy to bring that which you fear. I break the back of lack over your lives in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare over you grace for multiplication miracles in whatever area that you need it. Some of you, listen, <laughs> you've got plenty of money. Some of you just need more friends. You've got no friends. You, you, you want friends. And, and, and God can multiply that in your life too. Whatever it is you need multiplied. In this season, there's grace. There's grace. There's grace for multiplication miracles. So, Father, we stand in faith today as one body, and we ask you, God, because we have not, because we ask not, or because we ask amiss, we ask you, God, in all sincerity, with a pure heart, God, multiply that in our lives that you want to multiply. Or we're not going to even make a presumption. Although it's rather obvious if one is struggling financially that they would need a multiplication anointing there. But, but we're just putting it all on you, God. We're just crying out to you, God, whatever it is. Wherever there is lack in our life, wherever there is a dearth, wherever there is less than enough, God, would you release a multiplication miracle in our life, manifest a multiplication miracle in our life so that we can tell the world that our God is the God of more than enough. And not just tell them out of a head knowledge, but tell them out of a miracle manifestation in our life, a real testimony of your goodness and your grace. Lord, we're not asking for anything that we can consume it upon our own lusts. We're not asking for something because we just greedy. We're asking where there's a real need. Where there's a real need. And Lord, we might even know what that need is. We might not even know what that need is. We might think we need one thing, but we need something more. God, we're putting our hearts and our lives in your hands. And we're saying, Lord, do it the way you want to do it, in the area that you want to do it. Father, I praise you in advance for the multiplication miracles. I praise you in advance for the multiplication miracles. I praise you in advance. Come on. I praise you in advance for the multiplication miracles. I praise you in advance for the multiplication miracles. I praise you in advance. And we say it is done in the spirit. And we believe. We're going to keep believing. We're going to keep believing. We're going to keep believing until we see it manifest in the natural. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen.